Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to another episode in my series of Behind the Raw, where I take you behind the scenes and talk you through on my workflow, my editing style, and my thoughts on a particular image from a most recent shoot. Now, this week, it's the turn of one shot. Now, if you haven't seen that episode, actually, I'll link to it up here, but it's where myself and Bernard were finishing up our day, and we went to this one location, and Bernard had assured me that all we needed to get was one shot, but we needed the light for that shot. And it was a great finish to what was an incredible day. Now, on this episode, I'm going to do something completely different. I'm going to take you into Lightroom Classic here, and I'm going to edit the image my way. I'm going to use the auto, and then I'm also going to use a series of presets that I've recently downloaded from an excellent photographer from Down Under called William Patino. Now, I don't know him. He doesn't know me. I'm not affiliated with him. I purchased his presets all of my own money, but I wanted to show show you the differences that you can get when you use presets. So we'll jump onto the computer here now. Let's go. Okay, so here we are now over on Lightroom Classic, and here's the image that I've chosen, and I took a couple of images to be fair, but this one I liked because what I have is the sheep, little lambs that were here on the mound in the base. I would have preferred if they were a bit more in the scene, but they were up and then they were gone just as quick. And what was gone even quicker was the light. So as you can see with this scene here, we have these two trees and we've got this stunning wall that comes all the way around and intersects the whole in the whole scene in general. And I took this shot at 1 500th of a second. I was at F4, ISO 100, and I was at 93 mil. So when we arrived, we set up the cameras. I set up my composition and I took a couple of shots and then I was just waiting purely for this light to come. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit on from the edit point of view hitting on auto first and foremost and before I do that let's have a look at the histogram here because the histogram is showing you that there's nothing dark and there's nothing bright so there's a lot of data to be able to play with here. And that's a key point as well I've mentioned it before in these episodes get your image right in the field because if you've got something that's too dark underexposed or something that's too bright is overexposed you're going to have a lot more challenges to be able to edit that shot when it get back to base but from the beginning i'm going to hit on auto and i'm going to see what auto does with this image so as you can see here what it does is it gives a bit more uh, contrast it added plus six it brought down the highlights it brought up the shadows it brought up the whites and it brought down the blacks now it hasn't gone near any of the texture clarity or dehaze and it has added a slight bit of vibrance as well so that's what the auto will do. What I'm going to do now here is I'm going to go in and I'm going to create a virtual copy. So it's another copy of this image and I'm going to uh, reset the second copy and then I'm going to edit the image how I would edit the image. So looking here at this, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to bring my highlights up because I want to have the image a bit brighter. I'm going to be obviously monitoring on my whites on the histogram here. On the shadows, if I bring that all the way up here, doesn't really do much for me. I like the idea of having the darker area because it brings more attention here. Plus you want that shadow that you have behind the tree to be a bit more extenuated. So I think I'm gonna leave the shadows actually as they are. Whites don't really need to do that. I'm at my limit as you can see here from the histogram. So I'm gonna leave my whites alone. And blacks, I am gonna bring those down slightly just to give it a bit more punch. But if you look here at the histogram, you can see this box is lit up and you can also see the corresponding areas which are blacker than black. And then on that, I don't need texture, I don't need clarity. And from a dehaze point of view, I do like the sky. So I wanna see if I can bring some detail out in that sky and dehaze is gonna let me to do that. So if I click on this here and bring it out, as you can see, the detail is coming out in the sky overall. But now I am darkening the further area of the image down here. So I want to bring up a small bit of the shadows and a small bit more on the blacks. I'm okay with having just a couple of areas being totally dark, that's fine by me. You can then also go into your contrast, and if I reduce the contrast, it creates more of a dreamy look on the image. If I increase the contrast, it gives a bit more punch. But what I don't like now looking at this image here is that the sheep are kind of lost in the darkness. So I can look and say, okay, do I want to affect this area? I can affect that area by using my masks. So I can go in here and if I take a linear grain as an example, and I'm going to start my linear grain, I'm going to drag it up in the corner here and move my mouse to get the right angle and I'm gonna bring it to there, and I'm going to bring that slightly up so it's just covering the base of the sheep. And now what I can do from that is I can say, okay, now I only want to bring my shadows up here for them. So I'm not affecting anywhere else in the image, making them a bit brighter. I can also bring up my exposure slightly, not too much. 
and moreover then I suppose when I look at this I want to give them a bit of dehaze just to make them pop a bit further and as you can see now it's more balanced and they're not as dark as they were. So looking at that point of view I think that's how I would edit the image. So now next thing is we want to go look at the presets and looking at the presets that I said I downloaded from um, William Pacino and I think it's always a good thing to support other photographers you know because they've put a lot of work in relation to creating these and what attracted me to these was that they're now AI orientated so you can go in and, and have AI look at your image based on what he has done but you can also tweak that as well so for example it picks a subject or it picks a sky and he's created some really interesting um, presets here and I'll give you a look at them now next so what I'm going to do here again is I'm going to go in and I'm going to create another virtual copy and I'm going to reset that image again. Now, if I go over to presets here, I have a couple of presets which are my own presets and some that I've had for a number of years, but these are the ones that you can get with uh, Williams Pack. Now, if you look here on this, you have uh, all of these, which is analog. So if you see what it does, it creates an analog look and feel to the image. So you can get a completely different um, result from the image here. Now I'm not going to look at the analog ones. I'm not going to look at the exposure ones because my image was exposed correctly. I'm not going to look at the natural photography AI assists, but I mean the big thing for me on this is if you look at look at the amount that he has created. So he's got ones here that are for blue hour if you want to do a color boost and I actually like the color boost too I think it was one that I looked at earlier on and if I look at that it, it kind of reminds me of the Windows home screen although I think that the colors are a bit oversaturated. If I click on that here, we can see immediately over here what it has done. So you can see there has done nothing really to anything, hasn't changed any of the settings. It just brought up the vibrance. And how you know what has been affected is you see a dot appearing in each of these overline headlines, let's just say, on the top um, of the navigation bar. But so what I want to look at here, and I took a note of the ones that I like. So there was the color boost too, which I said, okay, is nice. If I want to look now at the next one that I did, I went into his uh, signature scenes. And if I look at the signature scenes here, again, you've got astro workflow, you've got adding atmosphere, you've got black and white images if you're interested in black and white. And the beauty here is that you can just hover your mouse over it and it will change and on the preview up here, but also on the main part of the image. So if I want to look before I even you know, commit to these changes, I can say, okay, I like the look and feel of that, but I do want to tweak it. So I can change that as well. Now, Color Boost 2 is, like I said, is one that I liked. And if you look at this here, it is overly colorful, but it hasn't really changed any of the settings on the image, but it's a simple one that he has created, which is quite good. Another one that I looked at here was Dramatic. So if I look at here and click on this, you can see that this image here now is a lot more drama, but then you got that same challenge of the darkness down here. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to create another virtual copy of this. I'm now going to uh, reset. So this one here we created was the dramatic two. And the next one I liked, which was forest scenes. And this isn't a forest scene, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't work for where you're shooting. So if I go into forest scene here, Look at what it does to this image. It creates a much brighter look and feel. It's a lot more airy. It's a lot more alive. You still have as well the shadow that I liked here. And also it has brought up the detail on the little lambs. And I haven't lost anything on the sky. And again, histogram will show you what the area that you have to play with on. And you can see effectively what has been done here. There's been no vibrance or anything like that added also on that one. So that's Forest uh, 13. Okay, so I'm going to create another virtual copy you know and the next one that I liked here was general landscape one so if I go into general landscape one you can see here again it's brought it down it's not as bright and airy it's more generic but from a landscape point of view it works perfectly well and what I do like in relation to this is the color palette that it has chosen but again if we look over here there's been not much done on the basic settings but if we go in here to our masks he has created two masks so one mask in the center and then one mask on the top of the sky and I can look at that and see what they've been done so that mask is only slightly reducing the top of the sky so again the next one that's there and I like that as well so I'm going to create another virtual copy 
and if we go into his signature workflow now I'm going to skip past a lot of these as you can see there's monochromes look there's mountain telephoto scenes which again can work really really well and it's great to be able to have all of these options because you can take that as a baseline and you might go okay I want to tweak that I like what he's done but I want to tweak it ever so slightly but I'm going to go down here to signature workflow and signature workflow 7 was the next one that I liked so if I click on this here you see that it brings the coloring of the image down again you've only got a slight increase on vibrance but it has changed on the white balance uh, and also there's another mask being added in here in fact there's a number of masks so there's four masks in total uh, in actual fact there's more there's six masks in total and you can see what each of these are here with these little connectors and you just put your mouse over that and show you what you have done so this effectively is a sky selection I imagine because it's now taking the shape and that's the beauty he's created this you don't have to go in and do it manually each time it will pretty much get the sky for you it's an instruction that has been uh, given so okay and then the last one that I want to look at here is one which is unusual again is waterfall so we're not photographing a waterfall we are photographing a landscape scene so I want to scroll down here to go to waterfall and it was waterfall number eight and now if I click on that here watch what it does to the image so this is now doing an update because it was trying to complete the last one but it won't take that long and now look at this here you've got a lot more brightness in the center of the frame which is exactly what I was looking for on that day these guys here they are in shadow but they're not too dark and the sky now as well you've got a lot of detail that has been kept and maintained in that sky so if we look at uh, the different types of edits that we've gotten from this one image so here on the first one was the fully auto on the next one I think it was the one that I had edited yeah that was my edit and then we went into Williams here so we had the dramatic 2 preset on the next one we have the forest scene 13 so you can see again completely different look and feel to that image on the next one here was the general landscape and again you see it brings down the overall vibrance of the image but works quite well next is signature workflow 07 and I like this one here this is probably a more balanced scene for me and then the final one which was the waterfall one uh, which I think probably in my opinion works the best on the overall image because it really brightens up the center of the image plus these little lambs that are down here yes they are in shadow but they're not lost in the image but you're getting all of that attention brought in here and I think this one really really works so yeah I hope you enjoyed this completely different <laughs> episode to normal uh, it's great actually to have these presets and also to give you a start like I said that you can then move your edits along and say okay I want to tweak this or I want to tweak that I think this is a great thing to do I've enjoyed doing it. I hope you've enjoyed as well watching the different results in fact let me know in the comments which image of these is the one that you liked the most from the presets or the auto or my own edit I'd love to know in the comments below join me next week I am so excited this continues now my journey with Bernard and we left Connemara and we went up to a place in Donegal and it's a place that Bernard had taught me about last year and said this place is absolutely amazing and I didn't believe in number one that it was in Ireland and number two I didn't believe that it was as nice as it was and this is an absolutely incredible location a world class location that is with us here in Ireland and I had such a great time in it and I actually had a special guest as well that came along on that one with me join me to see it wasn't Bernard it was somebody else so join me next Sunday for that episode I can't wait to share it with you so thank you very much as always for watching if it's your first time on the channel please do hit the subscribe button give me a like give me a comment and until the next time Schlong the Fall.